telling you, this work is beautiful. Like, I can't stop touching it. I would think it would be so delicate. Beadwork is a delicate art because every single bead is touched by the person that's creating it. So when you look at that particular piece, or any piece, the person who made it has touched every single bead. And as delicate as it is though, it's also very durable. It's made to be worn, it's made to be used. Beadwork was added to help bring color, bring joy, put that art form onto it. What was it about beading that connected with you so powerfully? What do you think it was? I think a lot of it has to do, for me, is with the culture. Because I've, I've always known that I was Métis. Beading became a form of meditative therapy for me. I was going through a rough time, and for me, it really helped me get through that and get over it and now it's it's just that's your life yeah, it, it, yeah it's become my life <laughs> I love that something with centuries of history has connected with you now in the present and it's still being done and used for the same thing yeah yeah there's so many stories that are being shared and one of the stories that I've found through my beating journey is that beating circles became a, sh a form of sharing circle and the beating circles was where a lot of stories were told why is it important for you to teach beating to other people because it was an art that was almost lost it wasn't so long ago that it was hard pressed to fill a kitchen table in Manitoba with people who knew who were beaters. Melanie, there are so many great pieces and I could ask you about all of them, but uh, you talked to me outside about history, yep. so I want to learn a little bit of history and this has some great significance to it. What, what is a dog tuppy? Uh, a dog tuppy is an item that the mushers would have on their dog teams when they would come into town for decoration, say for a special event or a ceremony, so they would dress their dogs up. And then this, you've got some framed pieces too. I mean, yes. this is this is stunning. The polar bear one, it was a few years after I had started beating. That particular one is a polar bear looking up at the northern lights on the tundra hmm. in Churchill. Stunning, it's amazing. Okay, Melanie, this is the part that I came for. <laughs> I cannot wait to learn how to beat. What I'm gonna get you to do is make a bag like this, and it's based off of a memory bag or a medicine bag, and you can wear it around your neck. You can put your precious items or your sacred items in there, and then they stay close to your heart. Oh, I love that. We're doing this center here okay. first. So if you wanna pick up whatever color bead you want. Like yeah. this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this might make the segment a little longer. <laughs> Now, what you're going to do is you're going to bring the needle back up from underneath. Okay. And you're going to come up on the outside of the bead. Okay. Yeah, like that? That's that good. too close? Yeah. Okay. And now what you're going to do is pick up seven beads. And you're going to take your needle and you're going to put it back through the exact same hole. I feel like this is not how that's supposed no. to go. <laughs> that, that's exactly how it's supposed to go. It's okay. The only the, thing we're going to do is we're just going... We're just going to take it apart and start over, but no. it's perfectly fine. <laughs> This has been really fun. I can see why this is so popular. Yeah. Melanie, thank you for teaching me. I, mean, very I love learning something that is hundreds of years old and I love learning it from someone who's so good at it like you. Oh, well, thank you. Melanie was wonderful. Not only did she teach us beading and history, she also made us bannock, dandelion jam, uh, and we had a wonderful, wonderful day out with her at Borealis Beading. In the next hour, we're going to head to Western Canada and meet up with Quinn, the owner of Drift Out West Fly Fishing. For more information and a list of authentic Indigenous experiences, you'll find those at Destination Indigenous. Uh, you can hold up your phone to that QR code right there and scan it, it'll take you right to their website. We also want to acknowledge that Manitoba is located on the tree territories and ancestral lands of the Anishinaabe, Anishinaawak, Dakota Oete, Dene Sulene, and Nihen Oak Nations. Manitoba is located on the homeland of the Red River Metis and includes ancestral lands of the Inuit. We'll be right back. Your morning is brought to you in part by Destination Canada. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.